Hello everyone, my name is Harzira. How are you today? So today we will learn about free fall motion. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to expand with examples, free fall motion, and gravitational acceleration. And you should be able to solve problems involving the Earth's gravitational acceleration for objects in free fall. Now, what is free fall motion? A free fall motion is an object that is falling under the sole influence of gravity. It is also any object that is being acted upon only by the force of gravity that is said to be in a state of free fall. There are two important motion characteristics that are true of free falling motion. First, Free falling objects do not encounter a resistance. Second, all free falling objects on Earth accelerate downward at rate of 9.81 meter per second square. Next, what is gravity? A gravity is a force of attraction that exists between any two masses or any two bodies. Sir Isaac Newton discovered that. A force is required to change the speed or direction of movement of an object. This statement refers to acceleration, which is recalled as gravitational acceleration. He realized that the force called gravity must make an apple fall from a tree, or humans and animals live on the surface of our spinning planet without being flung off. Quick question, is the time taken for feather and metal blocks to reach floor will be the same if there is air resistance or there is no air resistance? To answer the question, let's watch this video first. Okay, I want to do it in normal speed so you can appreciate how fast the feather actually falls. So here's feather in a vacuum, normal speed. Three, two, one. <laughs> Looks like it almost gets pushed down. It's weird to see it fall like that. Does the video answer your question? Let's move on to the next slide. From the demo, we can conclude that the time taken for the feather and metal block with presence of air resistance and without the presence of air resistance are not the same. Second, the mass will affect the velocity of free fall object with the presence of air resistance and that's why feather reach the base longer. And last, the gravitational acceleration will be the same regardless of the mass of free fall object. Now, it's time to check your understanding. I will give you 10 seconds to answer this question. Are you ready? So for question number one, what is meant by free fall motion? In 10 seconds, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. The answer is free fall is any motion of a body where gravity is the only force acting upon it. So for question two, multiple choice question. A coin, marble, and dry leaf are released at the same time in the vacuum cylinder. A. All three objects reach the base at the same time. B. All three objects float in a cylinder. C. The marble reach the base earlier than the coin. D. The coin and the marble reach the base earlier than the dry leaf. So I need you to answer in 10 seconds. 3, 2, 1, go! Time's 
signs up. So your answer is A. All three objects wish to breathe at the same time. Last question. This is also multiple choice question. Which of the following statements are true when two catch ball and one catch ball are in free fall? A. The velocity of two catch ball and one catch ball are same. B. The acceleration of two catch ball and one catch ball are same. C. The momentum of two catch ball and one catch ball are same. Or D. The gravitational forces acting on two kg ball and one kg ball are same. In 10 seconds, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. The answer is B. The acceleration of two kg ball and one kg ball are same. So, you have a glimpse about the concept of free-fall motion. We can now solve problems involving the Earth's gravitational acceleration for objects in the free-fall. First, let's take a look at this free-body diagram. We have a ball as our object. When the ball is thrown upward, we assume it as a positive motion. When the ball is released downward, we assume it as negative motion. This is important when solving free-fall problems. How about gravitational acceleration? Well, because the gravitational acceleration is negative motion, the value for it must always be negative, which is negative 9.81 meter per second square. You are going to need some formula to solve our free-fall problems. The first linear equation is V equal to U plus GT. Second, S equal to UT plus half GT square. And third, V square equal to U square plus 2GF. Where U is initial velocity, V is the final velocity, S is the displacement, T is for time taken, and G is gravitational acceleration. Let's do some practice. Example 1. Amira is throwing a ball vertically with initial velocity 10 meter per second. Calculate A. Time taken for the ball to reach maximum height. B. The maximum height that the ball can reach. Neglect a resistance G equal to 9.81 meter per second square. To answer the question, you are advised to follow four steps. So for A, the first step is, list all information given in symbol. So from the information we get, we will write the list like this. We know that u equal to 10 meter per second. V, the final velocity, is zero because eventually the ball will stop for a few seconds before fall down. And don't forget our gravitational acceleration. Step 2. Draw the free body diagram. Our first body diagram will, will look like this. The arrow is upward because Amira is throwing the ball. Putting all information that we have listed in the free body diagram will help us to imagine the problem. Step 3. Identify suitable linear equation. For answer A, you need to find time taken. So, we choose V equal to U plus TT. Step 4. Substitute all information and solve the equation. So, we have the linear equation. We substitute V to 0, U equal to 10. G equal to negative 9.81 and T as our subject. So we solve our equation like this and we get T equal to 1.02 seconds. For question B, step 1 and 2 are similar. 
So we use the same three working diagram. We draw a U. So we jump to step three. Identify suitable linear equation. Because we want to uh, find maximum height, we will choose v square equal to u square plus 2gx. Last step, substitute all information and solve the equation. So substitute all the information in the linear equation and solve for the linear equation and we get the answer maximum height equal to 5.10 meter let's do one more example Chan released a stone from a cliff 10 meter high determine A for the, the rock to reach the ground at the bottom of the cliff B the velocity of the rock before touching the ground Neglect a resistance G equal to 9.81 meter per second square. So A, the first step, this all information given in symbols. So our information will look like this. We have U equal to zero because the chain released the stone and no force is taken. So for the displacement, 10 meter and gravitational acceleration equal to negative 9.81 meter per second square. Step 2. Draw free body diagram. So our free body diagram will look like this. Step 3. Identify suitable linear equation. So we choose S equal to UT plus half GT square for equation A. Step 4. Substitute all the information and solve the equation. So we substitute all the information in the linear equation. So S will equal to 10, U equal to 0, T is our subject, G equal to negative 9.81. So rearrange the equation. And T square equal to negative 20 over negative 9.81. So T will equal to plus minus square root of negative 20 over negative 9.81 so t is equal to plus minus 1.43 seconds so negative uh, t equal to negative 1.3 is not taken into account because there is no negative in time so for question b can you do on your own don't forget to to switch to identify suitable linear equation and refer our free body diagram. As our conclusion, you have learned free fall motion concept with air resistance and without air resistance. Second, you have learned about gravitational acceleration value, which is negative 9.81 meter per second square. Third, you know how to draw the body diagram. And last, you know how to use linear equation to solve free fall motion question. So that's all for today. And thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye. And take care of yourself.